me, therefore, highlight some of the measures being taken by this government. And since no man, violent or government can act independently, every measure taken by this government is in consonance with policies spelled out by the private sector. We agree, we disagree, but on fundamentals, there is total compromise. And as Mr. Chiru has stated, we we'll make it a point to take on board not only the views of the private sector, but we move in tandem on the international forum. And since events are unfolding at an incredible speed, we have no choice but to cluster our strength to ward off the threats. And as the Minister, uh, Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Finance has stated, most of it, or to a large extent, almost all of it, is beyond our control because we're small, vulnerable, and we have no choice but to be out of looking. And it is against this backdrop that I intend to share with you some of the thoughts and measures taken by the Ministry of Government to address the issue in a very forceful manner. The Ministry is actively involved in the various negotiations, taking place indeed at multilateral, regional and bilateral levels. These negotiations, whether at the World Trade Organization, at the level of the ACP partnership or at regional level, are underpinned, as I've stated, by our objective to ensure sustained economic growth, to preserve, and I insist on the word preserve, and create more jobs, and to improve the standard of living of our people. I'm not going to highlight what has already been stated, but suffice to say and to remind ourselves that in his book, which he has recently written, the Nobel Prize winner Paul Krugman wrote a book on economic recession without even mentioning Africa any. So you can understand how significant we are to the outside world, let alone small Mauritius. So what choice do we have? But to cluster and act as one team. And we need to have a strong sense of patriotism toward the threats. True, we need to be out with looking, but we have friends. And our policy has always been one to make friends and not to have any adversaries or enemies. And it is in full recognition of these facts, the harsh realities, that government embark on an ambitious economic reform program aim at fully integrating the country into this global economy. In fact, we have to say no to the policy of start by labor or even those attempting to go for deglobalization. We believe in integration, and it is an integration that we want to achieve from a paradigm shift from a preference-dependent economy towards a globally competitive one. And no reform anywhere within the family or in the country at large or within a new community is painless. And we don't know whether recovery is round the corner. And this is true when you are small. And this is why I always impress upon people that God forgive when we start to have a nuclear family. You know, the extended family has been of valuable and of paramount importance to the social cohesion. And you can understand what it means now to be small, especially when you live in a small town. But we need to persevere and have to make sure that we are competitive. I don't have to highlight the measures taken by this government right from day one 
to address the financial situation which was abysmal. But true to say that we are the opportunity in our government who believes in a hand-up approach and not in a hand-out approach. We create opportunities and we are creating opportunities in new sectors of the economy and consolidating existing sectors. And I have in mind the respect of new sectors, renewable energy, water conservation, money and management, telecommunication, creative arts and educational service. And we need constantly to diversify our economy. We can't simply put our eggs in one particular basket if we want to give better resilience to our economy. I'm not going to highlight what IMF has predicted. But we know that within one month, 650,000 people have lost their jobs in the States. And there is the possibility that more than 200 million people will leave, an additional of more than two, an additional of 200 million people will leave uh, below poverty line. China, in China, more than 26 million people have lost their job. Which reminds me of what we read in that book written by Paul Krugman, of that young lady, a corporate lawyer, who earned a decent living from GM Motors. And she's living in one of those small towns, unfortunately, where GM Motors has closed its plants. She had no choice but to sell her car, her flat, but thanks to God, which brings me back to that extended family, she went back to mom and dad. Because they still have a house, and they're still around to give her the support. This is why I say, private sector has an important role to play to ensure the social cohesion. 